Welcome back. You're watching You Decide. The question we're asking you this evening, is India's AIDS threat exaggerated? Let's just take a quick look at that cube, get an idea of what you feel. 49% of you, in fact, say that yes, it has been exaggerated. 51% say no. So the number is actually increasing. There is a sense that perhaps it's being exaggerated. Before the break, um, Anjali, in fact, uh, had some remarks about target audiences. The audiences which you select as a target group, perhaps there is a need to move beyond these specific groups. Yes, uh, Anjali has a point uh, because the change, uh, there is a change in face of the uh, pandemic. It was earlier confined to high risk groups. Now it has moved to the general population, and which is what she is referring to. But at the same time, since the problem is uh, largely concentrated in uh, these areas, we have to saturate them first. Uh, while at the same time moving out to the general areas. Okay. From towns it has gone to the rural areas. From uh, men it has gone more into women now. Okay. It is moving into the younger population. So we okay. have to change our strategies accordingly. Right. Let's just get into the issue of, uh, of women's rights also in this entire struggle against AIDS. Um, physiologically women are more susceptible. But what role can women have to increase awareness or protect themselves better? I think first we have to recognize the fact that the epidemic is getting more and more a woman's face, mm -hmm. what we call generally feminization of the epidemic. If you look at the trend, uh, there is increased number of new infections which are taking place in the women. Secondly, the point is that as yet we don't have a cure, we don't have a vaccine and we are not likely to get one for quite some time. And if women are the ones who are getting more affected, let's try to understand why. And the facts are very clear. We, we used to say that the Indians as a society is a very moral society. We don't do anything bad, immoral, but the fact is there are thousands and thousands of commercial sex workers who are practicing the profession. Why are they there? Who's going there? So obviously men are uh, going for extramarital or premarital relationships. The second fact is that marriage is not protected. There is a very big study which has come from India itself which shows that 90% of the women who are HIV positive are in monogamous relationships and uh, they have got the infection through their husbands and partners. Okay. So the fact is very clear that women-centered approach is what is needed right. with full involvement engagement of women groups okay. and they need to find the solutions right. for themselves. Anjali, what about uh, awareness in schools? What about the campaign we now see from the government in terms of a more proactive um, uh, focus on condom distribution? Do you, do you think they're going in the right direction? Uh, yes, uh, I think it's fabulous if they really carry out what they are claiming that they want to do. Because somehow, I don't think sex education still is sex education. They want to skirt around the issue and talk about family life education and the rest of it. The point is we need to talk openly about sexuality. We need to teach our young people uh, how to protect themselves, how to make the right choices. But Vishnu, I would also like to just kind of go back to what this gentleman from Goa had said, that once the virus enters your body, there's nothing you can do. Actually, in today's time, the way it is today, the earlier you know that you are HIV positive, a lot can be done to offset infections happening within an individual. So it's very important that people don't think that nothing can be done. Today the drugs do help a lot. So it's very important for people to understand that. Right. In fact, perhaps you can add to that point that being HIV positive or having AIDS now doesn't mean that you're going to die. If there is adequate treatment, then, uh, then obviously uh, Dr. Qureshi, uh, that gives people hope. So, uh, and, and perhaps that's a point that needs to be made. Yes. You know, only 10% of HIV positive uh, people turn into uh, AIDS cases. And, uh, but uh, as uh, someone had mentioned, there is no cure yet. But at the same time, we have a treatment called antiretroviral treatment, which uh, improves the quality of life while you're there. Uh, it prolongs the uh, years by two, three, or four years. Uh, but uh, if you are in age case, the, at the moment the death is certain. But uh, at least you can uh, come back for come for treatment, improve your quality of life, uh, look after your lifestyle, eat well, take uh, good clean water, and there is hope. Now that there is hope, people have decided coming forward for testing. Otherwise, the uh, impression was if there is no hope, and if I am found HIV positive, so the what life are your is views on this? Is is HIV? now just a chronic illness because of the medicines which are available or is it still something which is going to result in death? HIV AIDS is something the world has never seen before. We have diabetes, we have tuberculosis, we have cancer, 
but people don't lose their jobs they are not turned out of their houses because they have those diseases whereas the stigma attached to hiv aids is tremendous which makes it a very different kind of uh, an issue that we all need to work together i also wanted to come back to the point of the prevention because right. anjali mentioned about condoms the abc strategy of prevention where a stands for abstinence b for being faithful and c for condoms is totally irrelevant and inadequate for women and when we are talking about a women centered approach this abc strategy which now also the government is trying to implement does not serve the women's causes because women are not, don't have the power to abstain for sex they can't say no to their husbands and partners especially when there is violence against Uh, women and so on. Dr. Kureshi, very briefly. Yeah, I would like to uh, uh, correct uh, someone's impression. The uh, government of India has taken a, a very conscious decision that we'll go for condom uh, promotion in a big way. Okay. Let's uh, quickly, I'm, I'm just going to bring in some views over now. Let's let's broaden it. Let's what people have to hear, what people have to say. Mumbai, go ahead. I don't feel it, uh, the threat of aid has actually been exaggerated because it's high time that we need to be alert of the disease. Because right now, even if, even if it is just 0.5 percent of the population that has been affected, it means uh, almost million people, which means million families are under the threat of getting AIDS. Okay, Delhi, go ahead. Uh, awareness is very important. You have to give priority to fighting AIDS and um, get over your religious hang-ups, your social hang-ups, moral hang-ups, and just give priority to fighting this terrible disease. Right. Uh, so deal deal with the disease get real that's the message i think all of us uh, certainly all our panelists share that view as well 49% of you say that uh, in fact it's being exaggerated 51% of you believe that it is a very serious threat we're going to take a quick break <laughs>